Joining us right now is former Pennsylvania governor and former Homeland Security Secretary Tom Ridge. Uh, good to see you, Mr. Secretary. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning. Nice to join you on so this beautiful you, day. Thank you. Do you think that the U.S. is prepared to engage in cyber warfare with the rest of the world? How would you characterize things right now? Well, first of all, Marie, I think it's appropriate that they're dealing with this issue at West Point. It, 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 cyber warfare is the fifth dimension of war, air, land, sea, space, and now the digital world. And by the way, we're already engaged in a cyber war. And the answer is we're not as prepared as we need to be. And the antidote to greater preparation is much greater collaboration and cooperation between the private sector and the federal government. Yeah, I mean, it, it just feels like things are worse than they ever have been in terms of the threats that are on the horizon as it relates to cyber. What are the... Well, you know, yeah, go ahead, sir. I'm sorry, but you know, there are a lot of good people in the federal government that work very hard to protect the digital network, to protect security and all these things. But you know, the breadth and depth of the capability in the federal government uh, is not as great as it is in the private sector. And that's why I think it's very significant that Jay Johnson is there, that the administration is looking to build a collaborative framework by which the private sector and the public sector can work together. I mean, from my point of view, it would be great to have some dollar a year people from the private sector working closely hand in glove with the federal government to uh, secure our networks for, for, to help uh, defeat uh, the constant pinging all the time, thousands and thousands of times a day from uh, sovereign governments, unfriendlies, trying to, uh, in terms of espionage, stealing intellectual property. So I think it's a, it's a wise thing to do for us to be thinking how we engage the private sector in this enterprise. It's very important. Yeah. Matt Murray from The Journal. Mr. Secretary, what's your take then on the Apple uh, DOJ fight and the state of relations between the government? Government and the private sector. There seem to be a lot of disagreements between the two about privacy and cooperation and, and what's appropriate. Well, I think that uh, now that it seems like the the public debate has uh, died down a little bit. Uh, obviously, there are different points of view, but I'd like to think that in a uh, a private environment. Uh, when we understand that it is our security interest at stake that they might find some resolution. But frankly, uh, let's face it, technology is always going to move more quickly than government and public policy will ever move. And so I think to have these private conversations to see if there's an opportunity to collaborate is absolutely essential, not just today and at West Point, but I think in the forevermore. The digital sun is never going to set. Tom, I mean, it's going to get hotter and hotter, yeah. and they better figure out a way to start collaborating. Tom, for years, the private sector has been saying, we want to get involved in government, we'll do it free, we'll do it for a dollar a year, let us get involved. But it's interesting how when things get really, really bad, they finally let us get involved. We all want to get involved way in advance and want to volunteer to do it. So it's really nice to see that they realize in the private sector, we have hackers working right next to those that are developers to find those firewalls, how to make them good. So it's a good show for the government to finally let us in. They should let us into more events. Yeah, look what the Pentagon did the other day, right? They were going to pay hackers if, if they were effective yeah. in actually breaking through. Listen, and governor, I got to switch gears for a second because, as the former governor of Pennsylvania, I got to get your take on what's going on with this presidential election. <laughs> Candidates uh, are, are zeroing in on Pennsylvania. The primary is Tuesday night. What's your takeaway from uh, the election so far, and what are you expecting in Pennsylvania Tuesday night? Well, I must say I'm amused by the, de the, the, the debate. Uh, some of the tactics and some of the comments are just not newsworthy, but the fact that I've won more primaries than you have means absolutely nothing to me. There's no shot clock in this campaign. There's no shot clock in this contest. You keep going until somebody gets 1,237. I think uh, John Kasich is going to do very well in Pennsylvania. I think he's going to do exceptionally well in Indiana. I mean, all this moves over to uh, the West Coast. Uh, I don't believe anybody is going to get uh, the record requisite number of votes in the first ballot, and game is on, and nobody ought to be thinking differently until somebody gets to 1,237. I've listened to, to uh, Donald Trump, and I've listened to uh, uh, Senator Cruz saying, I've won more primaries than John Kasich. Immaterial. It's immaterial. That's not, you, don't, you don't win the nomination by winning primaries. You win the nomination by 1,237. And I'll also tell you this. The, the donors and the establishment, whatever that is, they're in the boxes in the suites up there paying a lot of money. The workers are on the floor of the convention. And you know what the workers want? They want somebody that wins in November. I know, and but I no, think that's why John Kasich is positioned pretty well. Uh, Mr. Secretary, no disrespect, but listen, I mean, people at home just heard what you said, and you essentially said it doesn't matter who has won these, these primary contests. Well, it, it, only matter. Matter, it only matters who the, if you can get the delegates on the, the four, third or fourth ballot to vote well, for you. 
Well, that's, but that's, that's been the process for decades and decades. The, the, if, if Donald likes to talk a lot about the rules. I mean, I think he does. His, there ought to be a sequel to Long and Winding Road. It's a long and winding road when I look to him. But the rules were, the rules were, I can go bankrupt, but I have no obligation to repay some of the people that uh, suffered when I went bankrupt. Well, the rules are they have to vote for me on the first ballot. But philosophically, politically, and personally, there may be some people in these states who are obliged to vote for him on the first ballot, but they're no longer but obliged to vote. Even, That's why, why it's going to be a very interesting process. Have, why even have primary contests then? You just wasted the, the voters' time. Just no, have didn't. a bunch of delegates that are picked behind a curtain and have them go to Cleveland. Oh, you're, now you're, you're starting to sound like Donald. No, I <laughs> don't. Yes, like you are. My supporters. goodness gracious. It, the process is the process. He doesn't like when he wins. He's happy. When he loses, he's not so happy. Not, this is I've, the way I've the game. No this is the way the this. game has been playing for a long, long time. Right. But now that's just it. Put it's a game. Big, that's how people see it. Just get to votes. So what's most important to Pennsylvania voters? Do you think? I mean, look, we we got the exit poll. Well, I'll tell you what's important to me. Yeah, tell, tell us what's important. Go ahead. What's important to uh, Pennsylvania Republicans is that they win in November, uh, because what. A lot of folks don't understand is that everybody focuses on the national stage who our candidates going to be. Well, there's it could be an up, an uptick for the below, the ticket below. We got uh, Senator Toomey, a great senator, yeah. and his race will be affected by the quality of the individual we have at the top of the ticket. Huh. And Pennsylvania is a pretty blue state, but Republicans can win in that state. And my point of view is that the only Republican win Pennsylvania in November that's on the ticket now is John Casey. Sounds, Some other people may disagree. Sounds like you think he's the one. The only one to beat Hillary Clinton, John Kasich. Well, I think uh, 15 consecutive polls that have been taken. Mm. I mean, Donald likes to talk about polls, but I think 12 to 15 consecutive polls say he's the only one that that's can true. beat her. Yeah, that's what the polls say. Governor, game on. Good to see you, Secretary. Always a, always pleasure. a pleasure. Thank you so much, Tom Ridge, joining Thank us you. there. We'll see you soon, sir.